is uh, Ken Iserson from the University of Arizona, who's talking about the good, uh, the bad, and the ugly ethical response to humanitarian crises. Ken, over to you. Okay, thanks a lot. Did you get my help? While they're trying to uh, find my slides. Thank you, Mark, for inviting me back. Uh, this is far different from the first time I gave an annual uh, speech at the, or talk at the uh, McLean Center. We were sandwiched, sandwiched into this little room off the main uh, hospital lobby. One third of the people couldn't even sit down, and the ones who could, it was so uncomfortable they didn't even bother. But this is, this is much different. Okay, great. So is this the, uh, so front back? It, 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 it. Okay. Uh, this actually should have been the first talk because this is the big picture. I can only tell you that my data for this talk comes from having worked and taught on all seven continents. So, yep, seven. Count them up in your head. Yeah, okay. Six months in Antarctica. All right. Uh, so, what's the big humanitarian crisis right now in our world? And Oh my gosh, what good timing. We have Typhoon Haiyan that's hit uh, the Philippines. How providential is this talk and a huge, uh, but I was actually supposed to give this talk last year and got deployed right before the conference. And that was Hurricane Sandy. And the year before that it would have, and we see these all the time. Okay, so this is a catastrophe. This is what a humanitarian catastrophe is. Okay, a lot of people with needs, and all kinds of interventions are needed. We're going to talk about very quickly about the two classes and the really important differences, the acute crises and the chronic or cyclical disasters. Okay? Natural disasters, we hear about those. Uh, the endemics that have the potential to become pandemics, those are acute crises, uh, war, genocide, and then the chronic ones that we don't pay that much attention to. Okay. So these are the questions I'm going to try to answer very quickly. Uh, in each of the humanitarian crises, why do we intervene? What ethical guidelines shape our interventions? What legal guidelines? And how well do we achieve our goals? Boy, that's a, just a little bit to pack into this 15 minutes, huh? Okay, I mean, basically the whole United Nations uh, actions in 15 minutes. Natural crises, these are real pictures uh, of, and you can identify some of them. Okay, so natural disasters. Those are what lead our news. You know, uh, if it, the old newsman's thing, if it bleeds, it leads, but actually if it bleeds and we have great video, it leads. And, and so we see a lot about natural disasters. Why do we uh, intervene? Well, emotion and media and ethnic ties and politics. And let me just use uh, the Typhoon uh, Haiyan as an example. Emotion. We're seeing bodies and bodies. This is on NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN. Bodies and bodies and bodies lined up. Little kids, not no water. And Okay, so that's the emotion. And the media who are on site getting video. Ethnic ties. I sat next to a lady. Uh, on the plane coming up here, and she identified herself as being uh, Filipino-American, obviously not first generation, but she said her mother and all her friends were together gathering different things and figuring out the best way to <coughs> contribute to disaster relief. Do you know the best way to contribute to disaster relief? We'll get there at the end of the talk. Think about it. Okay. Uh, Ethical guidelines, it's very straightforward. Red Cross Code, and you'll see that pop up over and over again. The Red, International Red Cross Code is how we guide our ethics for almost all, almost all, uh, disaster relief. Legal guidelines, in this case, domestic laws and sovereignty. The US major aircraft carrier is steaming or has steamed into the Philippines along with uh, landing craft and destroyers and everything else. Did we do that just because we decided that was a good idea? No, the Philippines had to invite us in. They had to invite us in. It's national sovereignty. 
Okay, and how well do we achieve our goals? Well, we're going to have immediate success. We're going to clean up the bodies and most of the stuff. We're going to feed the people. And how well are we going to do it to prevent this problem from happening in the uh, future? Not so much. Pandemics. These are some possible future pandemics. And you've heard of some of them. Uh, maybe you haven't heard of all of them, but they're there. Why do we bother intervening? Self-interest, we don't want to be the victim. Why is the CDC all over the MERS uh, uh, coronavirus? It's only mainly in uh, Arabia right now. Why do we care? Because we're afraid it's going to come here. I don't think so. It's camel related. I don't think we have too many camels. But we, we do that. Red Cross code, public health, and disclosures, the World Health Organization, sometimes countries don't disclose, as we found out with China. Healthcare ethics, when we're dealing with the individual patients. And we actually do a very, very good job with this. Acute crisis wars, we haven't had a global war in quite a while. We still had over six million dead in the last, uh, well, since World War II in various different wars. And there's a lot of wars continuing, as we know. And genocide, and this is what genocide is, uh, basically destroying national, uh, eth ethnic, religious groups, and it's happening everywhere in the world. Uh, and there's all these different ways that they can be done. OK, so why do we intervene? Emotion. If it gets on the media, then there's emotion. And then ethnic ties. Different groups identify problems with their uh, co-religionists, certainly in China that's happening, uh, and other ethnic ties, and they want that stopped. Politics. Politics doesn't have anything with us intervening, right? <laughs> of course it does, OK? Uh, those who we're uh, tied in with, we go and help, or that we think will be a benefit to us. Now, here's a different ethical code. This is different. This is not the Red Cross code. This is called the Sphere Project code. Sphere Project is an international group, independent group, that did a code for relief efforts during war and genocide, war particularly. And I'll show you how, uh, the email, uh, the website for that. But that is what guides it. And then human rights law, and there's a for those lawyers in the room, you know, you know that there is a specific set of human rights law. And we're finally getting to the word humanitarian, which is kind of an oxymoron. Humanitarian law is the law of war. It's not the law of disaster relief. Go figure. They're lawyers, so what can I say? Um, and how well do we achieve our goal? It depends on how fast we do it and what roles we have. When we send in the uh, UN or we send in uh, troops or we send in others, what role do they have? Are they peacekeepers? Are they peacemakers, enforcers, fighters? Or peace builders? And oftentimes, unfortunately, they're confused about the role. Our responses are usually slow, and we don't know what role we want to send them in for. And so our responses are not that good. Chronic crisis, we'll try to get those all together. And they, OK, the refugees and IDPs, uh, internally displaced persons, water insecurity, food insecurity, endemic diseases. And we don't pay that much attention. Uh, Peter's group is, is making an attempt. The Gates Foundation is making an attempt. You know, various groups are making attempts. But in general, these are not very sexy topics. OK, because they go on and on for, you know, and we can't do anything. OK, so international pressure eventually builds up for some of these things, and we uh, act. Emotion, media. Has anybody in here not had an email with one of the starving children on it? OK. Uh, by the way, if you talk about photos that shouldn't be used in, in, inappropriately, that's the epitome, you know, the, uh, those terrible uh, 
terrible ads to get you to spend money on their administration, uh, the, the NGO administrations. Uh, Millennium Development Goals, we'll talk about that. And these are, that's just a picture of the Millennium Development Goals. If you haven't heard about them, they're almost about to run out in 2015. And this is what we were supposed to make better throughout the world by 2015, and we've done that, of course. <laughs> are you awake? <laughs> of course we haven't. But we have made progress. Uh, and I'll show, this, these are the things, by the way, we do. Uh, oh, I have to go back, I have to show you. See that picture down in the lower right? Uh, you may have seen something like that. There was a, a movie with uh, Dustin Hoffman and all, and they went into a, an African country and had Ebola, and that's EIS, that's the CDC. And uh, that was my dream growing up, but I just didn't, I wasn't in the right position but I've gotten other people to get into it. And that's uh, it's like the uh, uh, SEAL Team 6 of medicine. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Uh, and they do good work. Okay, this is what we do to support acute and chronic crises. We supply these things and we try to get long-term uh, support for sanitation, water supply, food, nutrition. <coughs> Who is we? I said we very uh, specifically. Who is we? The countries in whatever color you see, blue is what I see. I'm colorblind. Uh, but if that's blue to you, you get the idea. So it's basically the developed countries, uh, the well-developed countries. And notice that the former Soviet Union has no part in any of this, which I think is a little surprising. This didn't come out too well, but in general, uh, Millennium Development Goals. Uh, and this is how we, we did up to 2012. That's the official report. And the things in red, we really didn't do uh, at all. And uh, it's by different areas of the world. Okay. So here are the future hopes. Better coalitions and coordination among the disaster, acute disaster and chronic disaster groups. There is almost no coordination and they work at odds with each other and they don't even in most cases know what they're uh, doing. Literally, okay. Uh, best response, I'll get to that again. Uh, know what our criteria should be and how we should intervene militarily if we're going to send in uh, troops to prevent genocides and prevent war. Help support the recipients, let's say, for example, Philippines own disaster relief efforts. And guess what? We actually are doing that, but in part because the Philippines is not a third world country. They know what they want, they know what they need. A lot of them have been trained in the West. And in fact, in fact, to go back to talk I gave a couple years ago about this, the deputy director of their health department for the Philippines sent out a message to all these international groups and said, unless you can send me teams that are experienced and self-supporting, don't bother. We don't want you because you'll only be a drain on our resources. And that's exactly what they should have done and they did it and, and they're getting it. Okay, anybody know who said this? Oh, come on. Yeah? Yeah, that's unfortunate, but it's, it is true. Okay, the Red Cross code, the Sphere Project Handbook code, you can get these at these addresses. What is the best way to support these international disasters or even domestic large-scale disasters? Money. Absolutely money. Unfortunately, this lady who sat next to me on the plane said her mother and this group had been on CNN because they were collecting food and medicines and I have a picture I didn't put in here of these boxes and boxes after the typhoon uh, in Asia. And 
they were filling warehouses and there was nothing they could do with them because they didn't need the stuff or they couldn't find what send money send money that's it and charity navigator repeatedly has been said at least on the web is the best source for you to find charities that are legit but in the case of the philippines or identifiable places send money to their directly to their red cross the philippine red cross almost no overhead they're on the ground they know the system they're in place and they're doing the work in the u.s send it to the red cross designated for that disaster by the way these people asked me to take this picture so so i'll tell you and this uh this is from remote Ghana where I was working and uh, we always make it work. We're emergency physicians and global health providers. So uh, thank you very much.